Good afternoon and aloha. I'm Ron Mizutani and joining me this afternoon is my trusted and dear mature friend. I was going to say old friend, but you know, I'm not sure if you'd appreciate that, Chuck. Uh, Hi, Chuck Ron. Parker, Vice yeah. President of Content. Chuck oversees the team responsible for the program that you just watched. Uh, Home is here, episode number two. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we are so grateful for your continued support and for spending your afternoon with us as we enjoy Home is Here together. As you saw this afternoon, Home is Here is our, our new local series that takes you deep into our neighborhoods across Hawaii with an inside peek at how we live, how we play, and how we interact. It is, uh, it is an awesome concept and it's been fun to watch unfold. We hope that while you're watching the episode, you learned a little about Hawaii and discovered things maybe perhaps you haven't heard before or knew of, or you feel connected to this place that we all call home. And we hope that you enjoyed watching this second episode as much as we enjoyed creating it. We thank you again for submitting your questions in, in advance. Please do so and we'll get to as many as possible. Uh, Chuck, let's, let's get started with just the concept of, of the title, Home is Here. Uh, maybe for folks who did not join us in the first episode, how do we come up with Home is Here as the title? Huh. Well, that's a good question, and thanks, Ron, for that. And thank you all for joining us from as far away as Cleveland and Japan, we understand. And welcome to all of you. Thank you uh, for being here. You know, when we uh, talked about creating a new program, and this was more than a year ago now uh, that we started the process, you know, coming up with the concept was quicker than coming up with the name. And the concept was what Ron just said, you know, uh, stories about who we are, where we live, uh, people, the cultures, the traditions, the food. Every, everything you can think of, uh, uh, nature, all those things. But, but then what do you call it? You know, how do you come up with something? So we, we had multiple discussions. A lot of names were floated, and they, they were all really good. And then at one point, it kind of just hit us that we've had the name all along. We've been using Home is Here as a tagline for our pr uh, promotion of the station and our other uh, products, if you will, for years. And when we looked at it, and then we looked at the uh, concept of what the show was. It was it was like a perfect match. It, it just made sense, and hence, what was here. Yeah, and, and we've ran with it ever since. And, and our not only has our team embraced it, but I, I feel like the community has as well because we can all relate. You know, where is home to you? Home is where your heart is. Home is where you learn. Home is where we surf, where we play, where we eat, and and that's all coming to fruition. And the ideas are flowing. How uh, I know a lot of folks are wondering, how do we come up with the story ideas? Uh, who comes up with it? Can they take part in you know, some of the content that we're, we're, we're going to develop in the future? Well, the answer to that question is yes. We hope you take part. And we want, su we want suggestions. And I'll, right off the bat, I'll say that uh, home is here at pbshawaii.org is an email address uh, that's on the website, or you can just type it in. Home is here at pbshawaii.org where you can send us ideas uh, for home is here, you know, story ideas. And how do we start? You know, basically we hold our staff, you know, we sat around and discuss what, you know, what, what do we got? What's out there? What stories are there to tell? And to be honest, instantly the list was, you know, I can't do it in person, but it's a Google doc. And it was like one of these things really long, you know, and it, it just grew and grew and grew. And then we look at the stories and figure out, okay, that's great. Let, let's go chase this. You know, contact them see if they want to participate and you know it's it it works and we've had actually some suggestions already from the from our viewers we appreciate that uh, keep them coming again uh home is here at pbsabutty.org uh, i want to go straight to a, a comment really from charles and really i want to echo this is what charles said such talented production teams uh, beautifully shot and beautifully edited great use of osipov uh, archive footage, a great selection and mix of segments, something for everyone. You know, Vladimir Osipov, um, I'm going to be honest, Chuck, I had never heard of him. Yet I worked across the street from the IBM building for 20 plus years, as you did as well. And there are so many iconic buildings that he was the creator of in his, in his mind, and he, he made it come to fruition. But what a fascinating story. I did not hear of Vladimir Osipov. You know, it's interesting, you know, uh, thank you for the, for the comment. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we had some footage of our own from an older show we did in the 1980s called Spectrum Hawaii. We tapped into that, but then we also, uh, as you saw in the story, got some footage from the, the uh, people who are, you know, 
of the archive footage you know, from the people who were uh, involved in, the, in, in preserving those, those properties and stuff, and then, and, and then mixing it together, and some of that drone footage and stuff that we shot, and we got permission to get up to the cabin at Palihua and the Willow Strand house up in Makiki. And so it was a combination of our photographers and some, some great archive footage. And I'm gonna do a shout out to uh, Forrest Butler, who rarely gets mentioned, but he uh, is one of our editors who put that together, that, that piece specifically, and, and, and did an amazing job. And there's one quick other thing. When we were talking with Colette Miller early on to be our host, and he asked me, what kind of stories are you going to do? And I mentioned, and I had forgotten the name at that moment. And I said, oh, yeah, some architect. And Kalei just went, Asipov? I mean, he just said <laughs> right off the bat, you know. So, and I want to tease our digital side. We're going to have a digital extra on, on pbshawaii.org with Kalei talking about uh, Asipov and, and the great things that he's done. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go check that out on uh, pbshawaii.org on our digital content that Chuck speaks of, it's almost as if um, Kala is reading a script, uh, but he's not. He's speaking from just knowledge of, his knowledge of, of Asipov, and, and it's just awesome to listen to and watch it unfold visually. I'll just leave it at that. Very great job by our, our digital content creator as well, uh, Jesse Mukadeng Deng. Uh, Rachel asking, we're saying mahalo PBS Hawaii. Marissa and her team members are doing important work that allows students to see themselves in education. Congratulations. Uh, Rachel, thanks for the comment. And yes, Marissa Haligao, uh, I mean, could you think of uh, the, the potential in this young woman is endless. Uh, what a bright mind, a uh, bright mind I had up there. Oh, yeah. I can't think when I was in high school, did I actually think of or have the courage to, to challenge the curriculum and, and what, when it was not included in the curriculum? And she's, she's up here in, in my book. Such a great story and so well spoken. And I was, you know, that 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 story was produced by Anna Gomes, and, and I'm so glad we were able to find it and share that with everyone. Yeah, and you know the fact that that she shared not only with the curriculum at the school that she attends, but reached out to the DOE and and expanded that to add to the curriculum across the state. That is that is a difference making things at a young age. And, and congratulations to the Hago family. Absolutely. Uh, Skippy. Uh, Skippy Howe says, I miss the Spectrum series. Interesting, Skippy. It's kind of like a foreshadow of what's to come. We won't get let too much out too early, but Chuck, maybe expand on that. All right, Skippy. Thank you for that. So stay tuned next month, starting actually next week, next week, yeah. Thursday and every Thursday in April, we are tapping into our archives. Uh, we're calling it PPS Hawaii Classics, and we are rerunning uh, eight episodes of, of Spectrum from the 80s and the 90s. That's all I'll say. So yep. tune in Thursdays at 8.30, and it'll also be on our website, uh, PPS of Hawaii Classics, uh, this next month featuring uh, Spectrum episodes. Yeah, I look forward to that, Chuck. And it's like a gold mine that we have right in our own, in our own library. Um, you know, going back to gold mines, not so new at Tea House. I mean, we've all had memories, and I looked at some of the comments of those who are tuning in today. Um, we all have memories, whether it be childhood memories, adult memories, me memories with your grandparents. Uh, I had my wedding reception there with my wife. Um, Not So Noise is, is a classic, iconic destination, but the rich history behind it is, is, was fascinating to learn. I, I had some of that I didn't even know. Yeah, you know, uh, I have one connection to Not So Noia when I was at the University of Hawaii. Uh, I was the president of a local chapter of PRSSA, and we had our annual our awards dinner there. And before then, I had not heard of it. And once we got this, like, where has this place been hiding? It's it's amazing. The food is amazing. The people yeah. are are so it's such a perfect example of what we're talking about with this series yeah. too. With home is here. I mean, it, it's just a great iconic place, and we thank them for letting us in to, to share their their story. Yeah, uh, this takes you back. Uh, Not to know somebody is writing. Maybe the last functioning Japanese tea house in Hawaii. Uh, the Asipov home I purchased last year has an attached Japanese tea house designed by Asipov and reportedly built by Japanese carpenters from Japan. Very fascinating. Wow. Uh, we Thank share that, that comment with us. By the way, you have two, uh, you have two connections to, to the Natsunoya tea house. The, um, the, the gentleman that we interviewed uh, he's a, a St. Louis graduate, so just letting you know, he's a, he's a graduate of the Kalai Pohaku. Um, you know, a, a couple of other Go questions. Crusaders. Go Crusaders, uh, yeah, Go Crusaders. Uh, by the way, I, I, we joked about uh, 
Colette Miller being our host. And, um, you know, a couple, three weeks ago, we had Colette on for What School You Went. And I didn't know Colette Miller was an Iolani graduate. So go figure. And um, maybe perhaps that's why he knew a lot about Asipa. Um, I, I want to get to a couple more questions and I want to share uh, the opportunity for us to show the music of, of Home is Here. But before that, um, what can viewers expect? I mean, you folks have been going strong for like the last six, eight months, Chuck. What's, what can viewers expect in future episodes? Oh, thank you for that. And I'll uh, give you a little sneak preview of what we're talking about here. This is some of that list I was talking about earlier. I got it, you know, the list is longer than this, but this yeah. is part of it. Uh, so we have a story uh, on what we call conservation dogs. It's a, uh, a, a woman who uh, has these dogs. They're trained to sniff out uh, invasive species. Uh, so they go around, uh, her the dogs and her team, go around the hills um, on Oahu looking for invasive species so they can be removed or eradicated or whatever it might be. We have a uh, story coming up, uh, sort of a profile on Best Press, which is a long time uh, publishing, small publishing uh, entity here and uh, famous for some books that published over the years, but a very interesting background. I'm not gonna say exactly what it is, wanna tease that uh, going forward. Uh, any of you ever heard of the Nishoto Candy Store? And I have to profile them. Uh, we, we talked to a, a vanilla bean farmer out in uh, Latye, uh, which has got a very interesting story about how they actually get the vanilla to grow uh, uh, here, here in Hawaii. And a therapeutic horsemanship uh, program out in uh, Waimanalo as well. And we also have several more neighbor island stories uh, in the works coming up. So, you know, Home is Here is statewide and we, we you know, we're, we're looking forward to sharing all these stories going forward. You know, I know I, I won't give away too much because the Laie uh, vanilla bean farmer is a great story, but we're we're also waiting for the season to approach. The story is not done being shot yet. I mean, that's how intense your crew is. We're waiting for harvest time. Yeah, we started shooting that one actually, to be honest, last September was wow. the first shoot. We've done, I think, one or maybe two more since then, and we still have that, that to go. You're correct. So some of these uh, most of these stories can't be done on a one-time visit. There are a couple time visits, uh, but that's the nature of it. We want to, we want to tell them correctly. We want to get uh, as much as we can to uh, you know, do it right. You know, that's the beauty of PBS, Hawaii, and PBS in general, Chuck. And you and I came from commercial television. Um, in fact, Chuck was my boss for many years at KHUN. And, you know, I mean, there's nothing like being on deadline. Um, and the excitement of that every single night, it's, it's a grind. Uh, there's something beautiful about taking your time to tell a story, not just in time allotted, you know, an eight, 10 minute story on the news would be unheard of. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, waiting a whole year to shoot a story to be shared is unheard of as well. And that's the beauty of PBS Hawaii, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It, it's, it's so honestly refreshing to be able to spend the necessary time to tell a, a, a complete story. And this is not a knock on commercial TV. You no, and I did that for a long no. time, but you know, they, there are certain places they can't go and we yeah. can. And that's what makes this, one of the things that makes this special. Question, I'm not sure if you know the answer to this. And if we don't have the answer, we'll, we'll, find, we'll find out. Who and how can someone stay uh, in the Osipov cabin? Is, can, can the public stay there? I don't know the answer to that, but we can, we can uh, look that up. Uh, yeah. I don't know the answer to that, to be honest. Okay, if someone out there listening knows the answer to that, hit us up in, on our comment page and we'll, we'll get it out there. Um, you know, the music that you hear in the opening and the close has a very special story behind it. And the, the, the gentleman who's the creator of that, uh, Sean Pimentel, a, a very good friend for of PBS Hawaii for many, many years, uh, contributed to the works, his work and, and talents here for, through the years, a dear friend of mine, and, and, and a dear friend of, of all of us when it comes to the music of Hawaii, we reached out to Sean and we said, hey, here's a concept. And he wanted to learn more. Chuck, take us through the process and then the gem that surfaced that we didn't expect coming up. Oh, yeah, this is a great story to tell. I actually get chills even thinking about it. Um, so yes, we approached Sean and you know, like a, a good composer that he is, you know, he said, okay, let's sit down, let's talk about what's your concept, what, what's this show gonna be about, what are the stories gonna be? Because he wanted to get a feel for it, you know, to 
you know, do it right in terms of putting the music together. So we had this great meeting. And then fast forward, maybe, you know, maybe a week or so later, he called me and he says, okay, you know, I, to get to the music, I had to write a song. He had to write some lyrics. And I said, okay, that's kind of cool. He says, yeah, but I, I, I got the, the music. So he sent the music and we were blown away. It was, it was so, we loved it. It was so good, you know, so fast forward, we wanted him to come in uh, for an interview for a digital team to talk about, you know, how he created, you know, his process in creating and what was his inspiration and everything. And as he walked in, he was carrying his guitar. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And anyway, so we get in, we get him in the studio, all set up and everything all nicely lit. And he says, oh, first off, can I play the song and sing the song? I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, by all means. And granted, now, we had not heard the, him sing it. We had not seen the word. We, had, we just had the music itself. And so then he sang it. And, and at the same time, you wanted to jump up and down and cheer. You wanted to cry. It was so good. It hit such a home run with, for, for what home is here is. It, it's just an amazing. And so I want to share that with you folks. We have a clip of him singing this home is here in our studio. Aloha, I'm Sean Kiko Pimentel. And this is an original song I wrote for the new TV show here on PBS Hawaii called Home is Here. Home is here where the eva flies Above the ocean high Sings that same love song To remind me I'm home Where the rainbow shine Till the evening time All the reasons why I'm glad to be home Home is here where aloha thrives Through the kisses high And the hugs goodbye To remind me I'm home Where the stars shine bright Across Hawaiian skies All the reasons why I'm glad to come home Home is here where aloha thrives Through the kisses high And the hugs goodbye To remind me I'm home You know, Chuck, it, it, when I did the news, I used to jokingly tell the camera, cameramen and the videographers, OTO, one take only. And if, if we didn't happen in one take, it wasn't going to happen. That was on the first take. Yes. That was the one and only take. And you folks never saw this coming. We didn't. I know I didn't. And gosh, I can't imagine just blown away. At not only the quality of the music, the sound, but that's like a, it could be like a hit. Oh, it definitely would be a hit. And just the yeah. sincerity in it, you can feel it. I remember after he left the studio that day, I came up to <laughs> your office and I'm like, oh my God, the song is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we're what a gift that he provided uh, this program. And uh, Sean, thank you very much for sharing your talents with us and really sharing your heart. Uh, as expected, thank you to this uh, individual who shared with us the details to stay at the cabin. Uh, we were told to follow Osipov Cabin on Instagram uh, for details about visiting or even staying at the cabin. So you can stay at the cabin in Asipov. Um, have you been there? I mean, I, I've been to Palehua. Um, I, I have no idea where this is at. At the very, at the very top of Palehua Ridge, and this is up past Kent Timberline, and there are some folks who live up there, but it's where the um, near where the broadcast antennas are. Okay. At the top, and there are there are a series of cabins, uh, and I've never been to the Asipov cabin per se, but I was fortunate enough to uh, years ago, uh, my landlord at the time. Uh, he belonged to a hui that owned one of the cabins up there. Wow. So we we got we were fortunate enough to be able to spend time uh, we had weekends uh, up at Palihua Ridge. It's an amazing, but it's a different beautiful. world up there. It's just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's like heaven. It's like heaven. Um, comment is uh, from Marissa. Marissa, are you joining us? How'd it go? 
Uh, thank you, Marissa. First of all, congratulations. Uh, for thank you for sharing your story with, with the Homeless Here uh, crew and, and previous viewers across, across the country and the world, um, like Chuck said, she with Japan joining us, as well as uh, Tempe, Arizona, and, and across to Cleveland. But Marissa says, thank you so much for featuring me and the Filipino Curriculum Project. And you can follow us on Instagram at Filipino Curriculum underscore curriculum. So yeah, thank you, Marissa, for, for again, joining us and for, you know, stepping up and sharing your culture and, and how important that is to you. You know, um, home is here. When Timmy Chang, I'm going to digress a little bit, when Timmy Chang decided he's coming home, he's going to be part of the brotherhood. Uh, one of the first things our crews did for home is here said, we need to catch up with Timmy Chang. So that's going to be another future episode down the line? Yes, indeed. Sometime okay. this summer, we're hoping. Okay, very good. Uh, comment uh, at Lisa. Sean Pimentel's music is so beautiful and so appropriate for this series. Thank you, Lisa. We couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Chuck, how do you maintain this? I mean, we had a comment earlier from Charles talking about the production value. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the in-depth storytelling that our producers are, are able to do with the videographers. How do you maintain that? I don't want to doubt professionalism because our team is outstanding, but how do you maintain that pace? Uh, because no, there's a little looking back, kid. Uh, we're on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it's uh, we're excited about it. I mean, that's all I can say. You know, we have uh, the team does other things too here. I mean, we, we also have Nam LA, you know, insights uh, and you know the, the other you know PBS Hawaii presents and the other programs we do. So we have, we have to just, you know stay organized and talk to each other, which is key. Communicate with each other. And we have a great production team. You know, Paul Hayashida has been here since, I think, since the station. No, maybe not that long. But he's been here quite a while. So he's a, he's a veteran and organizer. And with him and Rianne behind the scenes. And then Anna, I mentioned earlier, Anna, go with John Jenks is our producer. He did the Ossipoff piece uh, in, in episode two. Uh, and uh, I mentioned Forrest Butler. There's uh, Todd Fink, um, our director of stories, and uh, Colton Talkington. It's, it's a small team. But we're a good team. And, the, and the, the key there is communication and just making sure everybody's on the same page. And I'm not going to say it's perfect by any stretch, but, you know, uh, we, that's the only way it works is that we're talking to each other and, and constantly challenging each other, too, mm -hmm. you know, with, you know, about the stories and about any the content for any of the programs we have. Well, it's not a good team. It's a great team, Chuck. And, and they have a great leader in you. Uh, not because you're on, on the call with me, but I really do have immense respect for your entire team. I often say, uh, you know, Leslie set the foundation with such uh, an incredible vision of the future of PBS Hawaii. And I'm the beneficiary of that right now. Stepped right into her big puka, her shoes, uh, still trying to fill it. But, you know, she assembled a quality team. Um, and again, this team I'm familiar with for my years in television. Most newsrooms would die to have what we have here as far as talent. So again, uh, super excited to be a part of this effort. Uh, comment says, Marissa, thank you. Yes, student voice is so important and we hope to uh, inspire others also to make a change. And uh, again, we couldn't agree with this person more. Marissa is, is again, changing lives at such an early age. Uh, you know, when I look at what we've done in a very short time, uh, even though we've been shooting this series uh, for a very long time now, Chuck, um, we want to make sure that we tell the stories of, of home is everywhere. So we started off on the big island, Hawaii Island, yes. uh, and we have many others. And we are already, your crew has already shot several neighbor island stories. Uh, yes, we have at least two more from the big island. And I know that we've had uh, two in the works for Maui. And I can leave Kauai out. You folks are in the mix. Uh, we're also looking at uh, Molokai. So, yes, I mean, home is here is all, all of us. You know, water separates these islands, but that's the only thing. You know, we're we're gonna find these stories and share them. You know, from around around the state. When you looked at uh, Natsunoya Tea House, was that inspired by um, one of your team members? Uh, how how did that story come come into play? And you know, it's just a beautifully told story with a lot of great vintage photos. And again, it it really prompted memories in many of us. That was Anna Gomes, our, yeah. our producer. She she. Pitched it early on, and that was another story. We actually started shooting very early last fall, uh, and everything, and it just it just came together, you know. And that's part of this is that we, 
you know, the imagination and the, and really being part of the community, recognizing what's out there and listening and hearing and reading in terms of what, what stories are there to tell. There's so many, you know, we can't find them all. We hope to find as many as possible. Yes, but we can't find them all. So, so your input uh, uh, to us is greatly appreciated. And before we get too much farther along, I want to do another shout out. Sorry, I'm name dropping here, but our digital team, Jesse McAdangdang, Kainoa Sanford are also producing Home is here elements that are digital exclusives. Uh, there's a couple uh, also pop stories that will run, uh, I believe, once the, once the show runs and those will be posted. And also one uh, from the Natsunoya Tea House about the spy. That's yeah. all I'll say. Uh, yeah. But it's check out pbshawaii.org. It's just some good stuff there as well. It is. It, it is. And it's something that you won't see in the program on, on broadcast, but it's a digital exclusive. So go to pbsla.org. We hope to bring more of those um, stories that not, not so much uh, weren't important to be on the broadcast, but just a little bit more nuggets that we found as we, as we told this. So yes, congratulations to our digital team to enhance this product. And um, we're very proud of it. We're very proud as a team and embrace it. You know, uh, you, you talked a little bit about your team being everywhere. You like chicken, man. You're like, oh, yeah. uh, you're, you're everywhere. You're everywhere. Um, but really um, keeping that energy level uh, with your team over the last year, coming out of COVID, like everything else that, that came to us, came to a halt almost, you know, we had to adjust with insights being Zoom. Uh, now we're going back to live. Uh, and then also having the team just feel comfortable about being there, but also the people we call. I mean, not everybody wants us to be there, right? I mean, how do you deal with that? Have, you, have we had people or businesses or organizations say, hey, yeah, that's great, but maybe we're not ready yet. Yes, absolutely. Some yeah. have turned us down for that reason. Others mm-hmm. have just respectfully declined, which, which is okay. Uh, just because you make a call or you're not, doesn't, doesn't mean you're going to actually get you know, the story you're looking for. But we're hoping that, you know, with as these episodes air and we get more and more down the road, that people see, you know, the quality of the, the stories and, and the quality of the production, frankly, that that people may, you know, who turned us out initially may come around, you know, and say, you know what, I, I want to be a part of that, you know, and, 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 and we're happy that they would be want, want to be a part of it so we, so we can share those stories. You know, back in the 70s and 80s, uh, Michael W. Perry hosted a program that was very popular on KGMB. Um, and, you know, Hawaii Moving Company was something that we all looked forward to. And, you know, it's a very different time, different technology, et cetera. But, I think this is like the Hawaii movie company of, of, of the current age, where, but also added technology and digital, you know, uh, digital content. This is part of who we are and what makes somebody special. And, and now we're bringing back all of these stories that needed to be shared. Some of them are being retold, but some of them very new to a lot of people. And, and that's exciting to be a part of. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, and, and as, like I said early on uh, today, we have this long list of, of stories, and and it's in, in a way it's like oh my gosh, you know we got to get to all these, and, and we will eventually. Mm-hmm. But you know some of them are things that I never heard of, you know, and some of them are going to be profiles like of of Marissa, you know, a young uh, you know a high school student who uh, found something that needed to fix be fixed. And, and, and then it changed and then even took it beyond her classroom, beyond her school. So those stories are out there. And as you mentioned, Ron, there's some stories, you know, like the, the gentleman who mentioned uh, Spectrum earlier that were told back then, but maybe people didn't see those, you know, mm-hmm. and there's, there's, there's an update. There's, they could be retold and reshared. And so nothing's off the table per se. You know, yep. we're looking at anything and everything. Again, uh, the place they go to on an email, if they have an idea. Home is here at pbshawaii.org. We welcome your stories and we welcome your input. Uh, we are here to serve you. You know, this concludes our talk story right now, um, but, you know, we have much more storytelling to share and to tell. We thank you all for spending the afternoon with, with us here at PBS Hawaii. Again, we're, we tried to get to all of the questions. I know there were a lot of comments today. Uh, tell your friends, if you enjoyed today's program, uh, Home is here uh, tomorrow. Where, where am I? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, 7, 7.30 on the broadcast, and then it'll right. be on pbshawaii.org after that. And we're live streaming that as well. Correct. Uh, every episode also uh, at pbshawaii.org. Uh, again, digital exclusives that you'll only see at pbshawaii.org. Go check that out. 
Our, our team's working very hard on that just to give you a little bit of everything. Again, we thank you for your support. We know this doesn't happen without your, your financial support, your verbal support, and, and everything that you have provided over the years uh, for PBS Hawaii. Um, it happens only because of you. And so please remember, we're here to serve you. So you're a part of this program very much. And uh, again, Chuck, congratulations. A final thoughts before, before we say goodbye. Well, I'm uh, proud, happy to share uh, what this team has done with all of you out there and, and uh, the episodes to come. Please join us and please send us your suggestions. We look forward to seeing you. All right. On behalf of the entire PBS Hawaii Ohana and board of directors and our community advisory board and all of us here uh, at our little grass shack in, I was going to say Kalakakua, but we're in San Island. Uh, I'm Ron Mizutani saying until next time. Aloha. Home is here where the evil flies above the ocean high, sings that same love song.